Hello learners, welcome to NIO Studios. Today we are going to learn about financial statement analysis. And today, before we start with financial statement analysis, we will have a quick recap of what we have been doing in our accountancy sessions with you. You all have known that we have identified transactions, recorded them in our books of original entry like the cash book, the subsidiary books such as the purchase book, the sales book, the sales return book, the purchase return book and the journal proper and thereafter after journalizing we went to posting these into our ledgers. Various accounts you build up and thereafter you also made the trial balance and thereafter we checked whether your debit entries and the credit entries posted in your journals and entered in your ledger were right or wrong. Thereafter you went on to make your financial statements. The financial statements were namely trading account, profit and loss and your balance sheet. You also made a manufacturing account if you had a manufacturing unit. Now we are at the end of the accounting cycle. We need to analyze and interpret what the results, the results of a firm, the results of your business unit. Why? You want to know what are profits, what are losses, if any, which your business unit has incurred. So we will take a quick look at how do we do analysis. Now if we look at the tools, there are many comparative financial statements, common size statements, trend analysis, ratio analysis, fund flow analysis and cash flow analysis. But we will study today the ratio analysis. But before we go to ratio analysis, let us see who are the users of financial statements for whom we are going to do the ratio analysis. We have internal users and external users. Again a quick recap of the external and the internal users. The internal users are all those who are working with you inside the firm, right from the top level management, the board of directors, the partners, the promoters, the managers at various levels, the auditors who are internal to your organizations and the employees of your organization. They are all keen to know the results, but some of them may not be able to interpret them as they would like it to be interpreted for them. They want these financial statements to become meaningful for them and you as an accountant have to do the task of doing the ratio analysis and making it more meaningful to, for them. Now we look at the external users. External users are those who are in the macro environment, those who are outside the business unit but they still need the important information from you as to what those results what does the income statement, what does the balance sheet show about your business unit. These are all your financiers, financiers and your investors who have lended you the credit, who have supplied you raw materials, inputs, intermediate goods on credit basis. Along with them are the public. Public comprises of all those who are exterior yet very interested in your financial results. These are the governed bodies, the competitors who are always looking at chances to capture your markets, your customers who are ready to switch to other, other competitors who have similar products, who are selling similar services in the market like you and of course the researchers, the data analysis and the external auditors. So now we will begin our session of today, the ratio analysis. Now before we start ratio, we need to analysis, we need to define what is a ratio. A ratio is a percentage or it expresses a proportion between two identified or two related financial data. Now today, we will first define the objective of ratio analysis. We were on the objectives of ratio analysis. I was telling you that we would like to do ratio analysis for the following reasons. First is we would like to know those areas of business which need our immediate attention as policy makers, as board of directors, as the internal component of the management of a firm. Second, we want to know those areas which can be improved to cater to the customers with quality products and services in the future. There where we can correct our variances, our differences, our shortcomings so that we do not go out of business very soon. 
Third, we want to analyze what has been a profit compared to other years, compared to our competitors and also we would like to know the liquidity position, the solvency position and the efficiency of our operations. We would like to know that whether we are able to meet a short term and long term debt obligations to our creditors, to our suppliers of funds etc. Third, we want to do a cross sectional study of our performance with benchmarking our performance with the industry standards. Third, we would like to provide this information derived from the financial statements useful for making future predictions and estimates for our policy makers in our management. So, we come to the first kind of R ratio that is liquidity ratio. In this we will study today the current ratio and the quick ratio. Now, liquidity ratios are those that help us to identify what is the solvency position of the firm in the short run, which means we are talking of current assets and current liabilities. A quick recap at what are current assets and what are current liabilities. If you remember students and learners, we have current assets, cash in hand, cash in bank, these are the most significant current assets, there can be more. There are bill receivables, straight receivables, sundry debtors, short term in investments, stock, or inventory as you may call it, prepaid expenses, advance tax and so on. Current liabilities are your bills payables or trade payables, sun free creditors, your bank overdraft, provision for tax, outstanding expenses. So we come back and if I define for you working capital, what is working capital? Current assets minus current liabilities. So what we are talking about is in liquidity ratio is the proportion of current assets in proportion to our current liabilities. So, we will now calculate the current assets divided by current liabilities and get the current ratio. It will, dip, it will indicate the amount of current assets which are available for the repayment of short term obligations which are also better known to you as current liabilities. 2 is to 1 is the ideal ratio, but we would always like to benchmark it with the industry or with our competitors so that we are always better than them. Now we come to the quick ratio. Before we go to quick ratio, quickly we will also try to calculate current ratio. Here is an example and illustration for you. We have inventories 50,000, trade receivables 50,000, prepaid expenses 4,000, cash and cash in hand and cash in bank 30,000 and trade payables at 1 lakh. Now, if we look at these, some are our current assets. So, we add up inventories, trade receivables, current assets, which come to 1,34,000. And then we add up the current liabilities given to us in this illustrations, which is trade payables plus short term borrowings, which come to rupees 1,4,000. Now, if we go back to our current ratio formula, it says current assets upon current liabilities. So, now we divide 1,34,000 by 1,4,000 and it gives a ratio of 1 is to 1.29 is to 1, which is not very close to ideal ratio, but nonetheless, it is moderately inclined towards the ideal ratio. So, current ratio is the ability of the business to pay the amount due to stakeholders in the short run which are short run or short term obligations as and when it is due to and that is known as liquidity for the firm. It is an excess of current assets over current liabilities. So, we would always want our current assets to be higher and more than the current liabilities, but we must always remember there are exceptions. Exceptions are when there are slow moving stocks or pile up and then it is not desired to have a high current ratio because your inventories are lying and you, it is not convertible into your cash or sales very fast. So, it is a matter of concern and then a high current ratio is not desirable. Second exception is when there is so slow correct collection of trade debts or your trade receivables. The trade receivables are high, but the collection is slow which means cash and near cash or 
liquid cash is slow to come into the firm for its use in business or its operation then also it is a matter of concern and then a current high ratio which is high is not desirable third when cash and bank balance may be a large portion of your current assets and may remain idle which means you have investable funds yet you are unable to find sources where to invest and earn money which again means your current ratio is high but it is not desirable now looking at the other side if the current ratio is low then also it is risky and undesirable because it means there are lack of sufficient funds or current assets to meet your current obligations or your current liabilities so learners we have learned about current ratio now let us talk about the second liquidity ratio which is the quick ratio also called by a better name the liquid ratio now liquid ratio will have the numerator changed it will not be current assets it will be current assets minus your inventories minus your prepaid expenses upon current liabilities now this defines your liquidity to a more directly than compared to your current ratio and therefore after calculation of current ratio most of the firms go in for the calculation of quick ratio because it tells it gives a better picture of the liquidity of a firm compared to current ratio because we have deducted all the inventories on minus prepaid expenses which are the slow moving current assets compared to other current assets now we will have a quick look at the calculation of the quick ratio here we are given inventories 50000 trade receivables 50000 prepaid expenses 4000 cash and cash at bank 30000 trade payables 1 lakh now if you remember just now only i have said that we will remove from current assets the inventories and the prepaid expenses so here we go about it and we remove them and therefore we get 80000 as a result and then we have the denominator which is already calculated in the previous illustration as 1 lakh 4000 and therefore the ratio comes out to be 0.77 is to 1 now the rule of thumb is 1 is to 1 it is always better to have 100% quick ratios quick assets sorry compared to our current liabilities if our quick assets are 100% of what we have as current liabilities it is a very good situation for a firm but nonetheless in this illustration we have 0.77 is to 1 which means the firm is steadily walking and working towards a idle quick ratio therefore we have clearly defined that 100% of quick assets compared to our current liabilities is the rule of thumb which is an idle position for a firm now we move on to the second part of today's session which is talking about and learning about solvency ratios when we talk of solvency ratios we are talking of long term obligations or long term payments which the firm or the business unit is desired to meet for the various purposes for which it has obtained loans it means we have to pay the firm's commitment firms obligation to pay timely debt and that means the interest and the principal on the interest on the debt taken by it therefore it indicates a firm's ability to meet the fixed interest and its cost and repayment schedules associated with its long term borrowings now we will be studying today in today's session three solvency ratios the debt equity ratio the proprietary ratio and interest coverage ratios now if we talk of the debt equity ratio it is equal to long term debt divided by shareholders funds when i am talking of long term debt i am talking of a period beyond one year which means long term borrowings plus other long term liabilities plus long term provisions remember to learners never to forget to add long term provisions it is very important to add in provisions long term in our long term debt equity will comprise of your share capital and of course your reserves and surplus and don't forget the money received against share borrowings now in this example if i have the debt as 5 lakhs and i have equity as 
lakhs then the ratio comes out to be 0.33 is to 1. Now we move on to the propriety ratio or the equity ratio which indicates the proportion of total assets financed by shareholders fund whether it is equity share capital or your preference share capital and therefore it is also a good indicator of the solvency of a business unit. This ratio therefore establishes the relationship between a shareholders funds to total assets of the firm and therefore the shareholders funds is the sum of equity share capital, preference share capital, reserves, surplus and minus accumulated losses if there are any of the business unit and the total resources will be equal to the total resources assets of the firm. A ratio below 50% is risk free in case of equity ratio for the creditors since they may have to lose heavily in the event of companies liquidation on account of heavy losses. A ratio of equity which says that more than or below 50% or 50% is a danger mark, danger is a warning signal for the creditors because in case the company is thinking of winding up the company's liquidation is near then they may have to suffer heavy losses. But if the company has more than 75 then the creditors need not worry and therefore it is safety it is a suppo supposed to be a safety margin for creditors to keep on lending to such a firm or business unit. In the last part of this session we are also going to do and study about the interest coverage ratio which is also a very important solvency ratio for us to study. Interest coverage ratios formula says it is net profit before interest and tax divided by interest on long term debts and if you see the denominator clearly defines that long term debts interest is very very important for the firm and therefore we want to find out if the profits before interest and tax are sufficient to pay the interest on the long term debts or not and therefore it is uh, indicator of the number of times the interest on long term funds can be covered by the profits earned by a firm. A high ratio is always considered better and is always providing a higher safety margin for the long term debtors. Now let us look at this illustration. Here the net profit after tax is given as 60,000. We have taken a debt, a long term debt. A 15 percent it carries an interest rate of 15 percent it has to be paid back the principal in 20 installments the ta tax rate currently of our firm is 40 percent I repeat we have net profit after tax 60,000 a debt which is long term for us which we have taken at an interest rate of 15 percent we need to pay back the principal in 20 installments the tax rate is 40 percent. Now before we put the values of the numerator and denominator we need to calculate net profit before tax which will be equal to net profit after tax into 100 divided by 100 minus tax rate taken together that means we get a figure of 1 lakh. Interest on long term debt we need to calculate 15 percent of the debt taken which comes out to be 1 lakh 50 thousand and therefore net profit before interest and tax would come out to 2 lakhs 50 thousand that is net profit before tax plus interest which equals to 2 lakh 50 thousand. So now we are ready to calculate our interest coverage ratios which is equal to therefore 2 lakh 50 thousand divided by 1 lakh 50 thousand. Okay learners today we have learned all about ratios and we have learned in part 1 of this session the liquidity ratios namely our quick ratio and the current ratio. The quick ratio is also better known as the asset test ratio. We also learned the process to compute them or to calculate them. Thereafter we went on to solvency ratios and learned 3 types of solvency ratios. The proprietary ratio better known as equity ratio, the debt equity ratio and also finally we moved on and learned the interest coverage ratios. Now learners we are prepared to learn some more ratios in part 2 of the ratio analysis soon at NIO studios and we would be learning together the profitability ratios, the valuation ratios the leverage ratios together in session 2 
of the ratio analysis. Thank you learners.